Uh, um, I've lived in, I think we first moved to Fitzroy in 1978 and we've been living in St Kilda and we were getting evicted from the street because they partitioned us out, the whole street was getting a petition together to throw us out so yeah. we decided to move and this guy I was sharing a house with, we, uh, I don't know, we came to Fitzroy for some reason, got incredibly drunk and found this really horrid dump on Johnson Street, you know, and loved it. It was a, it was a pit, it was an old shop, yeah. and it was just dark and dingy, and we thought, ah, oh, this is fantastic. Yeah. So that was our first uh, major excursion into Fitzroy. It, would, would, did you find some connection between Fitzroy and Fitzroy? Um, I've been to Fitzroy in the very early 70s when I was a teenager to go to hippie dances up yeah. the top of Brunswick Street, but I'd never ventured over Gertrude Street. So um, I was never brave enough. Yeah. I, I think the, the the scene around Gertrude Street and the top of Brunswick Street was was so sort of disturbing for a 15 year old from the suburbs. You know, yeah, yeah. I'd never seen people falling over cars, drunk, and sort of shouting in the street, and some guy on a box preaching. You know, standing up there, you know, <laughs> in the middle of this sort of stuff, and then this huge line of all these hippies standing outside this hall all going in there, so yeah. it's a real sort of like a quite an eye opener and, yeah. and that was probably my very first introduction into Fitzroy and then I'd been to visit a couple of people down by the Fitzroy pool in the, the 76, 77 yeah. or 77 it would have been and uh, I quite liked the little streets because it was really hot and like you, you sort of you baked, you know. You, you walked along them were barren. There was no trees, and it was, uh, it was sort of quite romantic for a person who uh, had decided that the in urban life style of punk was was more fashionable than uh, the hippie lifestyle, which was going out, you know. <laughs> so it was quite nice, and you know we had our punk rock band, so we moved to Johnson Street. So the pubs were really rough, Victoria at that time? The Gertrude Street ones? I don't, we would never... My memory of living in Johnson Street was we lived along Johnson Street and we went about as far as um, the pub up there, which is now a restaurant, I forget what it's called. The Grace Darling. Grace Darling. Yeah, and that was a, we never really went up Gertrude Street any further than that because it was a bit too dangerous. Yeah. Or we, our perception of it was that it was too dangerous. You know, yeah. it probably was, because the Grace Darling was a was a mixed pub where, where Anglo's and uh, the Koori culture sort of met, and, and where the more bureaucratic end of the sort of Koori culture and yeah. and that socialised there. You know, whereas you went further up, and the Builders was a no-no pub you never went into, and um, yeah. the Rob, I mean the Royal, which is not there anymore, and yeah. then you went up to the Champion. So, so why did you not go to the builders? Um, the builders, I went to the builders once because I worked with this Koori guy and it was his birthday. Yeah. And we left the playground and he took us to the Royal and you know, that, that we had a few beers there and I had to, you know, kiss, you, you kiss big fat buck mama and I had to kiss all these people and sort of, you know, and they were, they were sort of, yeah, they were sort of antagonistic towards you, but, but in a humorous and sort of friendly way, you know. Yeah. You were with this guy and it was, sort of, it was all right, you were cool, you know. Yeah. But it still felt very uncomfortable. And then we went down to the builders and I walked up to the bar with everybody and asked for three pots and the guy just sort of like burnt holes through me, you know, I could feel these gaping holes in his eyes just, <laughs> you know, just singed me as he stood there with his arms folded in this brown sort of... Um, V-neck sweater and no T-shirt underneath, and just didn't say a word. <laughs> and uh, I said, "Oh, so the guy we were with actually ended up getting us some beers, and sort of we we hung around. I was getting a bit drunk, and so we my memories are a bit vague from that point, but uh, yeah. I know it was a very uncomfortable feeling. Yeah. And it was the pub in Fitzroy you didn't go to, you know, you just walked around there. You know? yeah crossed over the road. Because one day I'm walking past the Royal, or just getting up to the Royal, and I thought, oh, I'll cross over and go past the gym on that side. And the table and the chair come flying through the window and bounce <laughs> on the road and, and, and stuff. Yeah. Do you go to pubs in Fitzroy now? Oh, no. I've given up drinking and sort of... <laughs> I don't really do that. I go to the Napier after work occasionally and sort of... We used to go to the Standard yeah. when Steve and um, Dave 
had it with these two guys. Yeah. And when, when they had it and sort of used to frequent that. But yeah, yeah. yeah. The pub culture's changed, but I do like the Napier and stuff. Yeah. Has it changed, do you think? Oh, yeah, it's sort of, it, it's gone, all that sort of, you know, the classic sort of pub culture, you know? Yeah. I don't know, from the 60s or 50s or whatever, it's sort of all, I don't think there's very much left of it now. The yeah. Birmingham probably down on the corner. Yeah. Uh, Johnson and Smith Street, that's about it and stuff. Maybe, um, maybe the front bar over at the, the one over here on Brunswick Street. Yeah, the old that's, colonial that's, stuff. That's sort of become much more tricky. Yeah, yeah. That criminal element of Fitzroy <laughs> and, and lower working class element yeah. is really confined to the flats and they don't drink in hotels anymore. They all take heroin and, and other noxious sort of drugs and things. Yeah. So they and and they're um, they're not the Fitzroy used to be their suburb, you know. Fitzroy was a closed off little suburb when I first came here. Yeah. Um, it's like a country town. Everybody yeah. drove around it. Nobody really came through it or stopped. And if they did, they usually um, ended up in some sort of trouble. It was in a sort of, yeah, it was sort of relatively unpleasant. You know? so, so I suppose there was like no reason for people from other suburbs um, No, there wasn't anything here. You, yeah. you know, you just, you know, you only come here to get bashed up, I suppose. You know, yeah. if you wanted to score drugs, you know, it wasn't really a Fitzroy sort of thing that I knew of anyway, you know, you went to other suburbs, yeah. you know, St Kilda's and all those places. And and, and you lived in the flat? Yeah, um, by accident we sort of, we lived in Johnson Street for a while and then we moved to Nicholson Street to North Fitzroy to a trendier shop opposite Hearts and then everybody went overseas and except for myself and I moved around a few different spots around Fitzroy and sort of had a house in Fitzroy and, and I had a girlfriend who lived in St Kilda so we commuted it backwards and forwards and then for some reason we ended up moving to Northcote which was a really bad move but in the process of people coming back overseas they were asked when they returned did they want a Ministry of Housing house or something and they said no and the woman said well just fill out the form anyway so she filled out the form and a year later the house came up or the flat and we all moved in we had about six of us in it and sort of then it sort of um everybody left and it ended up just being two of us we stayed there for about 15 years and sort of loved it you know and how was that oh just lots of changes in that period yeah yeah i saw the a change from, yeah, the things who lived in it affected a lot of the change. When I first first moved in, the danger was um, late night attacks from drunken people, you know, yeah. who, who were staggering around outside in some comatose state, you know, who would just randomly beat you up for no real reason. It was sort of, you know, it was, uh, and you couldn't predict it. There was no predictability to it, so it, it became really scary. Yeah. And even people you knew, from working in the area still would attack you because they'd be so out of it and they might say sorry the next day but you know oh, sorry mate you know, shouldn't yeah. have bashed you up last night <laughs> kicked your head in you know but I wasn't feeling the best you know yeah. so and that was about it at first you know yeah. and then then we've over years we had a wave of drugs and and, the, and, it's, and a lot of the focus shifted to the day where the day became sometimes more dangerous because you had marauding groups of you know junkies from the outer suburbs and stuff wandering up and down the flats looking for people and looking for people who've hidden stuff and sort of just really causing a lot of crap you know and they're, they're basically still there you know and when did that start happening? That probably started happening after we've been there about five years. Really? Yeah, yeah. But then really, you're talking about, you know, like one percent of the yeah. the population that causes yeah. all this trouble. You know, the rest of it. That's why I loved it so much. I get in the lift on the night going home, and I had um, Vietnamese and Chinese and some Africans and yeah. there's some Mongs and yeah. a whole lot of little kids and a dog and the sort of the shop. And you'd all get in the lift, because you'd all been going up and down for so long, you'd all be going, hi, how are you, to a little nod, and sort of, yeah. or you'd help them with their shopping or something, or the baby, or sort of, you know, it was yeah. great, I loved it. It was really um, cosmopolitan, yeah. and sort of, uh, and then you'd go in, you'd 
go into your flat and close the door and had a view of the dandelions from 12 floors up, you know. Yeah. It's, and it was warm. I'd never, you know, living in share houses all my life, you've yeah. never lived in a warm place because I'd always been dumps, you know. Yeah. You move into this and you've got central heating in your lounge, you know. Yeah. You're standing in the middle of winter in your jocks <laughs> at 5 o'clock in the morning having a cup of tea, watching the sunrise over the dandelions going, aren't I a lucky guy, you know. <laughs> Thinking of all these people in their little Victorian terraces, you know, freezing away. And there's a lot of um, new bargains to Australia. History must be their first, first view of what Australia is about. So, you know, first, first right yeah, right. I suppose so. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't know if they've been anywhere before that. Yeah. yeah. There seems to be waves of migrants um, due to where I work at the playground and stuff. You saw them over, you've seen them over the years. Yeah. Actually, different groups come in, and then what happens is um, the less affluent and the less go getters actually stay behind yeah. and the other ones sort of slowly drift out and move on to other suburbs and other other lives and stuff and then you get a little core of people like you've got Anglos, you've got a little core of Aboriginal people, Turkish people that have been here quite a long time and they're really quite happy yeah. in, in their environment there. They don't want to move, they don't want to live in a house in the suburbs, they don't want to do the garden, you know. Yeah. They have a little plot of land where they grow some veggies and stuff like that and sort of, you know. It's great, you know, you've got the hospital, you have a sort of, you know. Yeah, Barbara, he'd be the same, the Hmong people, way. Yeah, yeah. It's a shame, because they, they probably had about 30 flats at one time, you know. Yeah. And they were very, oh, they were just the strangest people, you know, yeah. and sort of just, uh, I don't know, just un-Western, you know, I never really dealt with people so closely over a period of time who weren't westernised, you know, yeah. and, and stuff. They were really good. So they brought their children to the playground? Yeah, was, the kids used to come to the playground and we got to know them. We had a few incidents and we, we had to go to um, various little ceremonies at certain times and kill the chicken and wave the insects over the thing and, you know, we, I know, forget what we did now, we did something. Yeah. And that, evoked some evil spirit, you know, yeah. and they had to be cleansed in there. They were very, uh, yeah, they were great. But most of them moved to Queensland, then they moved out to Sunshine and out that way and stuff, bigger suburban houses. Yeah, I, I, I suppose so, yeah, just yeah. more people, you know. They have a lot of kids, you know, sometimes there'd be like 20 people in one flat and stuff yeah. like that, you know. And right. sort of, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. just, and, and you know, I suppose they see it as being more, Affluent, they buy the house out there, you know. They work hard and sort of, you know. Do you, do you think there's something different about Fitzroy as opposed to most of the city? Well, it's, I suppose it's the oldest suburb in Melbourne and it really is now part of the top of the city. And once it might have been a suburb, I think now it is sort of really just an extension of the city, you know. Uh, uh, and it's become a recreational area for Melbourne, you know. It's yeah. probably taken over from Carlton. Carlton's become a monoculture sort of, you know, from the 70s onwards and yeah. the bohemian life, you know, yeah. which was, I, I gather, has been in Fitzroy since the 50s and probably even earlier. Probably yeah. always been here, you know. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Do, you, do you see that could be a threat to Fitzroy's? Well, I suppose so. <laughs> But I suppose, I always thought that pub cultures, I know I was really um, depressed about way how pubs disappeared and changed and that yeah. culture had gone and then one day I realised that it wasn't so evil, it's just people died off, you know, yeah. really, that, that generation of people who drank all the time in hotels in the day and stuff were all dead, there was nobody left, the place was going to close down anyway because yeah. they had no customers anymore, yeah. so the whole that culture had to had shifted and changed in order to survive. And yeah, because my girlfriend's very depressed about the state of modern Fitzroy. She yeah. hates it. Yeah. I wanted to go back to how it used to be, quiet and yeah. you know, when I want, you know, Betty down the road and I want want you know, those old people that lived up the end of the street that I used to talk to and, and those hippies across the road, you know. Yeah. And so yeah. Um, more community? Well, it was, uh, I suppose it was quieter yeah. and, and sort of you knew more people and sort of, you know, yeah. 
Yeah. And, you know, the people from the Rose have sold it around the corner from us and sort of are moving in. And she's come on, yeah, they've gone, you know. <laughs> and they've been there 20 years, you know, and sort of... Yeah. But I think Fitzroy's big enough and it absorbs these sort of changes and sort of... And, you know, they've been trying to get rid of the people at the southern end up by the Ministry of Housing for a hundred years, you know, they're still here. Yeah. Even if they don't live here, they still come back here, you know. It's, yeah. it's sort of... Uh, it's not that easy uh, to it's not that easy to socially um, engineer a change in areas like governments uh, tried in Fitzroy. Yeah. Slum clearance programs and yeah. and the windshield the windshield review when they pulled the buildings down yeah. or the houses you know they just drove around in a car that's condemned that's condemned <laughs> then came in with the cops and beat everybody up and dragged them out of their house. Yeah. So uh, yeah. Do you think things like property values and that closes the threat? Yeah, well, of course, because... <clears throat> yeah, because it just pushes people out, out yeah. of the market, you know. Yeah. I don't know anybody in Fitzroy anymore because they all live in Northgate and Brunswick and and sort of move to the country or, or live in East St Kilda or somewhere like that because they couldn't afford to live in Fitzroy, you know. Yeah. You know, the, the rents are really just astronomical in sort of... Yeah. And all the properties have turned into sort of young home buyers. And yeah. But I just think it's a ah, uh, another change. It's another change, and I think that'll change again. You know, as as you used to watch Brunswick Street go up, up and down. You know, one one year it'd be dominated by a certain culture. Yeah. The next year, it everybody who worked in the restaurant would be. Uh, uh, a lesbian, and then, and then it'll be dominated by that culture, and then eventually, it's there's no cultures. It's it's means of different cultures now that dominate Brunswick Street. It's not one anymore, you know. Yeah. And sort of, so it's good in some ways, and, but it'll change back. You know, all these condos will become low rental of apartments <laughs> in 20 years' time, and you know. And, yeah, and sort of, you know, they'll be considered the new um, Ministry of Housing eyesores, and sort of, you know. Yeah. I, I suppose and stuff. Because yeah. Fitzroy was a rich suburb at the turn of the century anyway, so yeah. I think it was dominant, you know. People created up Smith Street with parasols and stuff and it was the you know, the yeah. Parisian part of Melbourne for a while and yeah. so I think it goes up and down, up and down, you know. Yeah. Do, do you think there's anything that that um, people from other suburbs or other areas of the country would learn place like this? Some example. Um, I don't know. You know. <laughs> Fitzroy's always had a sort of. Um, it's never been a very kind suburb. I don't think people who've lived here have never been very socially conscious, yeah. or hadn't, in, in as far as I could see, over a period of time. You know, yeah. they're very self-interested and very. Um, yeah. Not necessarily honourable on all 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 occasions, you know. Yeah. It's, it's been full of a lot of roads, and you know. <laughs> and my thing is, you know, it's a typical Fitzroy thing winning the the grand final in 1944, and because it was everybody else was at war. Yeah. Where were the people in Fitzroy? Oh, they were, you know, sneaking around, you know, breaking into people's cars and, yeah, <laughs> and ca causing trouble, yeah. hooning on the street and stuff, you know. Yeah. They had a, a sort of slightly different agenda. Yeah. You know, you still get that lyric in character that people wrote about at the turn of the century, uh, standing on Brunswick Street up the top there or on Gertrude Street. Yeah. You know, they look really different, but yeah. they're still doing the same thing. They're shouting abuse at people, you know. Yeah. They're all dressed up and sort of, you know, know where to go and sort of shout and sort of, you know. Yeah. Fitzroy has a wonderful irreverence for the police as well, you know. To the police? Yeah, or yeah, well, historically, I think, you know. In what way? Well, well, even to this day, no one, sort of kids that I know who've gone into trouble with the police, they, they don't care about being caught. It's like this, you know, it, it doesn't, you know, it's no, it doesn't really match to them, you know. Yeah. They don't think of, you know, that they actually, by the time they have 16 or 17, have about 30 or 40 charges with the police. And I kept going, well, you're not very good at this, are you? <laughs> oh, 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 I'm Fitzroy's number one crim, you know? And you're going, well, you've been caught all these times. I've just been around, just go visit my mates in jail, you know? Yeah. 
It's a sort of like people go to Noosa, people in Fitzroy go to, or used to go to Pentridge for a holiday. <laughs> So, so these are some of the kids you come in contact with? Yeah, 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 people from the top end of Fitzroy, yeah, yeah. yeah. Do, do, you, do you have friends in the other, um, North Fitzroy? Or? Yeah, I do, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like North Fitzroy, we bought a flat in North Fitzroy actually. Oh, that's where you live? No, no, we, we, yeah. we don't live in North Fitzroy, but yeah. sort of, yeah. We bought one in, in the property boom, you know, that's yeah. a one bedroom flat, you know. Yeah. Yeah where two were swept up in the real estate sort of boom. Yeah. And it's, no, I like North Fitzroy, that's where my sister lives in sort of. It's always been, a, it's where the the latter day Fitzroy Council ruled Fitzroy from from yeah. up on the hill. <laughs> they, 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 they decided, you know, what went on. Do you remember when the town hall was here? Mm. Loved it, Monday night council meetings, you know. Yeah, yeah, we'd all get there. We'd leave work, we'd go to the Napier and get slushed. We'd meet all the sort of socialists and lefties and yeah. and self-interested and, 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 and all the various people from the Sue Duffies, from 3CR and yeah. stuff like that to... Yeah, I mean, we just get there and shout abuse at the council. It was fantastic, you know. <laughs> Shane, Shane, Norman, you know, we'd all stand up and until they threw us all out, or sort of, you know. Yeah. And even then, the police would periodically would look at their watches and go, "Oh, sorry, I'm off duty now." <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, yes, yeah, so it was a wonderful sort of. Um, oh, it was like theatre. You yeah. know, it was fantastic. Do, do you remember what sort of things they were played about? The ideology. ideology? Yeah, it'd be a whole range of things, laneways and, you know, the council's corruption in giving laneways to their friends, like the one behind you, actually. Yes. It was a, a big contentious issue for a long time, you know. Yeah. And the people who owned the house acquired it from the council without anybody else sort of having anything to do with it. And, and various councillors acquired the lanes next to their properties. So yeah. Kind of into part of their well, as, as, as the story goes, you know. Um, these are the stories that one was told over periods of time in the Napier Hotel drinking and chatting about these things and then running back over after, you know. And I used to have the friend I lived with who worked in the Fitzroy Library, so you get the inside goss from the council and all that sort of stuff. And, and she'd always see that there was a little dumb waiter that'd take all the bottles of wine and, and luxurious cakes up to the council meeting yeah. that they had and stuff, you know. So, yeah, it was, it was good, you know. Because it was intimate and, and you sort of got to know these people and sort of, you know, and somebody knew chased the mayor one day down the street and was going to bash him up and he ran into the police station you know, <laughs> just for, for, um, to, to hide and stuff like that, you know. There was all these great little incidents that used to happen over the years. And how the, the, sort of the council's gone and sort of part of the community goes to the yeah, yeah, those sorts of uh, yeah, the small country town sort of things are gone. Now, you know, now we have the, the bigger board of Yarra Council, and it's more. Yeah. Uh, I suppose you get more professional political people involved in it and stuff. There's more money. There's more at stake. There's more to administer and stuff like that. And it's so when when you say country town, you just mean that Fitzroy had it. Like boundaries with this Yeah, yeah. Kids I know never went anywhere, you know. Yeah. Like, they never left the top end of Fitzroy. I used to joke about they didn't know which direction the city was because they never left Fitzroy, you know. <laughs> they were sort of, you know, they were really tough and, and mean and, and sort of, um, but at the same time they had this sort of fear of the rest of the world, you know. Yeah. They, were, they were sort of quite soft and intimidated by it, you know. Yeah. I suppose it's like the jobs that you do. Oh, I don't think anybody worked really. I don't think it was much. Oh, there, there, yeah, there would have been more work. Yeah, for yeah. sure. There were still factories in Collingwood and, and yeah. sort of, you know, we, we still hadn't lost all those things. So it was still going. But yeah. Jobs, kind of like shops or cafes. Yeah, I think it's service industry stuff. Yeah. You know, a building, you know. Yeah. Building's been a boom, you know. Yeah. Sort of, you know, had my. Pet little projects that I walk past, watch the new building go up, you know, and, and sort of. Yeah. So I'm talking between, I quite like the new developments in some cases, you know. Yeah. It's added a whole another level to Fitzroy in, yeah. in dimension wise, you know, the trees have all grown and sort of. Yeah. Quoting Chopper Reed from the other day, the trees in Collingwood have got six foot taller since I last lived here, you know. <laughs> and uh, they have, you know, it's become a really 
it's a very tree leafy suburb now and it's got a lot of birds that come back and so we have all these rosellas and a whole range of different sort of things you know whereas i always remember fitzroy is a bleak hot little <laughs> suburb where the sun burnt you and, and in winter the wind froze you you know okay um thanks much no problems yes.